Hi, I'm Brian. This video is about how your engine craps its own pants to keep the environment clean. <laughs> Brian's Mobile One. I started cutting my teeth on the Subarus that had the spare tire under the hood, the DLs, GLs, and I've been working on them ever since, from the carburetor days till the fuel injected and fly-by-wire, all that kind of stuff. The one we're working on now is a 2009, and it's the EJ253. 2.5 liter, because it says EJ25. The 253 is the single overhead cam, and it's a later model variant. So on this one, the question I get a lot of is, what is this? Here's what the PCV BSD looks like in its natural habitat. <laughs> what does that do? If you watch a Volkswagen marketing campaign for Unpimp My Ride, what does this do? It sucks in air. It's, it's definitely sucking. Well, this doesn't do anything. It's part of the PCV system. This is your PCV valve. If you don't know what that is, it's positive crankcase ventilation. Basically, the blow-by, the, the bang that goes around the piston rings is where the pistons are. PCV valve takes all the positive pressure that builds up from air going around the piston, combustion gasings going around the piston. It's got to go somewhere or else it's going to make the engine leak oil. If you pressurize it, then the gaskets are having more strain than they can deal with. In the early days of steam and gas engines, they just assumed that your engine's going to leak oil and it's going to stink as this gas has come out. And then they came up with the idea of the draft tube and the slipstream of the car. They call it a road draft tube and it would just basically leave a little trail of stink behind you. But it would freeze. It wasn't reliable. They had to come up with something better and that's where we got the PCV system. As if the smell of manure in the streets wasn't bad enough, people are smelling that kind of sicky, oily smell, and they didn't like it, so I had to come up with something. So they vent it into your intake, which is normally right here, that big black box when you open up the hood on your Subaru, and it's right there. So these are kind of tricky. You can't unplug this from the car. It's normally like this. You can't unplug it unless you like get all up and around, janky kind of way, and unbuckle this little guy right here. And what this is, is it's kind of a babysitter. In fact, it's a PCV, positive crankcase ventilation, BSD. And BSD, in case you didn't know, stands for BS. You know what that is? No. <laughs> babysitter. Babysitter. Dongle. It's got an electrical plug to it, but it's just a through circuit. Um, if you were to x-ray vision this thing, I mean, it looks complicated. It just goes in a circle. It's just, you know, that's all it does. It doesn't read anything, it doesn't do anything other than give your engine, check engine light, a P1491 code for the PCV system malfunction. Now, so if people delete this, or if they do it, I think the government required them to do something to where if people got rid of the PCV system, that uh, it would take care of that. Now, why would people get rid of the PCV system? It's like your engine is crapping its pants. You know, we use the bathroom in a toilet because it's just less messy that way. This garbage that stained all this plastic dark colors is going back into your intake you ever breathe on a bus that's really crowded and you're breathing what people breathed out and it's just gross? That's what PCV systems do. They keep the environment clean, but it kind of makes a mess inside your engine. You get the same kind of color that you have here and there. There's the PCV valve. It's basically a spring. It just has a certain amount of load. It should shake. It's a little maraca. The Subaru ones are metal and they're super easy to clean. You can use all kinds of aggressive stuff on them. In my experience, they survive it and they do great. So you don't have to buy a new one, you just gotta clean it so often. Remember all the crap I said that was is like crap in its bit pants or whatever? You don't want that going into your intake, but there it is. But it will. A lot of it does hold up in this rather than going in the intake. But the vapors that make that nasty stuff, they get in there. So here's your throttle body. I pulled that off. You look inside and you can see there's just all kinds of oil and junk and garbage that gets in there. That gets in there through the PCV system. Ooh. If you want to prevent that, what you can do is you can put a little can that allows stuff to condensate and fall into it. And then the air goes across the top and all that crud stays in the can and not in your intake. They call that a catch can, a catch can system. We're going to be putting a catch can system on this pretty soon. This one is turbo. And that means that it's forcing air, like just shoving it in there, and you get higher RPM. You know, basically this thing doesn't come alive and wake up until 3,000 RPMs, and it's like, rrrr, to seven. So with the higher RPMs, more blow-by, more crap, more garbage. So you see a lot of turbo vehicles having oil catch cans. They're higher maintenance, because you have to do that. Most people don't do the maintenance. That's why they don't come with them new. 
If you don't maintain it and it gets full, then you get a lot of oil all at once getting sucked in, and that's not good. Could even hydrolock, which means when it goes to compress the air fuel mixture, it is bleh, and uh, it comes up short and bends a connecting rod. So rather than having warranty claims because people don't maintain their cars, they opt not to put oil catch cans on. Have I seen that happen all the time? Very no. I've seen more of that bent rod hydrolock from running through puddles than anything. Risk and reward. So the, all that oil and stuff in there, I talk about crapping its own pants, it's dirty, it's gross. What happens if the oil gets in there? Ultimately it can get on the valves, it can carbon build up, it can cause pre-ignition and that makes your timing retard or basically what it feels like if your timing gets retarded is your car goes gutless for a second. It's just like, whoa, just like brace yourself. So that's what happens more often than not to protect it from having bent connecting rods. So who wants that? Who wants to sign up for that? Me? <laughs> no, nobody wants that. Thanks for watching. Be sure to click like and subscribe.